everyone, today we're going to look at the Productivity 1000 Series PLC Modbus RTU Serial Communication. And up on my screen here, you see that I have my Productivity Suite programming software uh, running currently. And we are connected uh, uh, through the to the CPU via our uh, Ethernet connection. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the Modbus read Modbus write instructions in order to um, communicate to our solo process temperature controller. So if we take a look at our actual um, configuration, we have our solo process temperature controller right here. And here is our productivity series uh, PLC. We are currently connected through our Ethernet port located right here, and we have a RS-45 port located here on our CPU, which is a uh, twisted pair uh, two conductor that's going to my solo to communicate. So what we're doing is we're reading and writing both the set point and the present value, and we're also reading a lot of the parameters from that controller. So the first thing we need to do is take a look at our solo and on the Automation Direct website we have our links to our manuals here and what we first of all have to do is set up that solo controller in order for us to communicate to it. So we need to go into the initial mode setting so we hit hold the set key for three seconds and that brings us into our our set mode then we can use our uh, sequel or cycle error carry key here in order to move through all the different parameters and those parameters we're looking for is right here our online configuration so let's just cursor through there's C high and low limits there's our PID heating alarms and then we get to our um, online configuration, which is currently set to on, which is what we want. Then our next is our, our uh, Modbus protocol, which is set for RTU. Next, we have our uh, network address, which is set for one. Then we have our communication baud rate, 9600. This is bits per second, so this is the transfer rate between the uh, Solo and the uh, Productivity 1000 series PLC. Hitting again, this is a length, 8 uh, data bits. And then we have parity, which is set for even. And once more, we have our stop bit, which is set for 1. Now these parameters are very important so that we can match this up with our Productivity 1000 serial port. So hitting and holding set again will bring us back into our run mode. And just to make sure uh, we have on the top round here our PV, our present value of our solo, which is set for currently right now 24.2. And this is our set value, which is in the green, which is uh, 30.0. So once we have our solo now set to communicate, now we can look at our program and we look at our system hardware or our setup hardware of our productivity to ensure that our serial port, our S45, is the same as what we just set for our solo. In order to do that, we can. there's a couple different ways under the applications tools. Uh, you can go to hardware configuration or you can go under setup and we go hardware configuration and right now this is our CPU right, we can click it once and you see the green arrow double click on that and we come up with our CPU module itself we go to serial ports and under the serial ports we're using our 485 connector then we have our read write we set it for Modbus RTU then we have our baud rate 9600 our node address is 1 
Now because we're using proactivity as the master in this communication, um, that node address is really irrelevant. Then we have even parity. We have eight data bits and we have one stop bit. So everything else is left to the default. So everything looks good. We'll just hit uh, cancel that because we already have it all set up. And right now what we're doing is um, we have both the um, solo and the productivity all set to communicate and we are actually uh, online and communicating right now. And we do it through two different instructions. We have a Modbus read and a Modbus write. Now the first thing we'll do is take a look at our Modbus read. And it comes up with our instruction self. So we have our Modbus read. We're using a structure called Modbus read. That sets up all these in progress, complete success, and all these other bits and flags that help us if we want to check and make sure that everything's communicating correctly. Then we have our serial port set for uh, the 45 on the CPU. Then we have our slave node address, number one. This is the one that we're talking to. So this is, means that we're going to talk to the solo uh, process temperature controller. Now, one of the most powerful things is we have our address and polling options. We're going to set this up for automatic polling. What that means is that all of the logic for sequencing for all of our Modbus read, Modbus write, or network uh, read and write is all done um, through the firmware of the of this instruction. So this is very important um, and makes uh, programming of the Modbus uh, network very easy. So we set it for automatic polling. We set every 100 milliseconds, so 10 times a second. Then we have our master slave starting address, which is 4097. And we're using the Modbus decimal addressing. And we have a number of tags, which is one. And we're going to read the solo present value, or PV value. So we'll just uh, close that down. And you can see here that I'm running and our present value currently right now is set and it's reading it in at 24.2, which is exactly what it's saying on my solo. The next instruction is my write instruction. And on my write instruction, it's very similar to the previous read. I'm using structure again. So Modbus write and we set up these flags for us. We have set for our 485 serial with node number one, so it means that we're talking to our solo. Again, we set up the automatic polling, set for every 100 milliseconds. And then we set up our uh, Modbus decimal addressing. And this time here, our slave starting address will be 4098, which is actually our solo set value. So this is a set value that if we put into the unit, we'll actually set our solo to that value. And we're using a single uh, write instruction here. So we'll just hit uh, cancel on that one. And you'll notice that on our program itself, all we're doing is ta um, having one output condition, which is our Modbus read and then our Modbus write because all of the polling, all of the sequencing required to get in this information at the solo automatically is done for us. Going down, we have two more um, reads. And this time here, we set up the reads so that again, we will bring in a series of different data. In our case here, we're looking at the input range high and low, our input type, our control uh, mode, the heating and the cooling, the output periods also for output one and output two. Then our last uh, rung here, we have um, another Modbus, we call this Modbus read 3, and we're setting up and reading the PID parameters, so the proportional band, the integral time, and the derivative time we're reading in from the, um, from the solo into the Proactivity 1000. So that's all there is to uh, communicating to the solo. And what we can do now is just look at our data view. And our data view here 
these are all the tags that we are um, presently seeing. So there's my present value and there's my uh, set value for my solo. And if I want to change this to another number, we'll say 330. And then what I'll do is I'll write that information. And you can see that it writes it almost instantaneously, 10 times a second. So if we change that back, we'll say 300 again. Write that, and again, right into the unit itself. And just to make sure that we are communicating, we can also toggle our graph. And here on our graph, what we can do is we can set up both these two units and we'll say graph these tags and the tags are now graphed. Our set value is usually in green so we'll change the color to a green. Okay and our present value is usually in red so let's just change that to a red. Hit OK. So there we go. And if I hold on to the temperature probe, you'll see that the heat from my hand will start increasing it. And we will see that right on the graph going up. So we can quickly monitor our signals. And you can see that our communication is working just great with our solo. So all the links and documentation can be found on our website at accautomation.ca. You can and if you like this video and like to see more, there are three ways in which you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also go to ACC Automation and subscribe to our website. When you do, notification will be given to you every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to do to help us out is to tell a friend or colleague about the site. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.